Let's agree in their showing out family and friends. Abby and I welcome you to this could be a touching subject, sins of the fathers. Sins of the fathers. Do people hold those things in? Do they hold those grudges? Here's what I ask us to do. Mm -hmm. Never ever focus on the errors of others yeah. in the past. Forgive, live, and let it go. Someone else's mistakes should not take your joy. That's right. Amen? That's right. Father, dear awesome, loving, dear God, Wash our heart of sin as we look into this subject, God, because you're going to hold us accountable for what we've done. So I ask you, God, forgive us, God, of any errors that we've done to anyone in the past, God, or doing, God. Forgive us and help us to live for Jesus and all that we think, we say, and we do. We praise you. Amen. Yeah. Looking at this subject in Ezekiel, I think it's very important. Ezekiel 18, 1 through 4. He gives in the whole passage, in the whole chapter, three different things to make the, the strength of the story of we ought to let it go because we are not perfect. True. Okay? And I think about Jesus Christ talking to the Pharisees in Matthew 23. They told him, had they lived in the time of the Old Testament, they wouldn't have done what Israel did. And the thing is that we're all human, we feel at some point. And so Jesus Christ corrected them, and he told them, that they were in error. Now, looking at this, the people were saying something that was not true over and over again. And Ezekiel, man, has been called forth to give them the truth. Okay? Because they were thinking they were it. And their fathers was not. Let's take a look at Ezekiel 18, 1 through 4. It says, the word, and this is subject, it's titled, A False per Proverb refuted. And that's what Ezekiel had to do. He had to be a man standing in a gap telling them. He says, the word of the Lord came to me again saying. So now he's heard it more than once and now he's moving forward with what God has called him to give to the people. What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? And this is the prime, the saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Saying because of fathers and the mothers, those people before, they did the sin. They're saying that's why we're suffering. Jeremiah talked about the same thing in Jeremiah 31. In Jeremiah 31, he talked about the same thing. He said in Jeremiah 31, 28, it says, And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck them up and bring them down, to throw down, to destroy, and to afflict, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days, they shall say no more. They were kept on saying it. So now, Jeremiah told them, Ezekiel told them too, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But for everyone shall die for his own iniquities. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth will be set on edge. So the fathers are not responsible for the sin of the children, nor the sin of the ones that came before them. So looking at our passage in this, he says in verse 3, As I live, says the Lord God, the sovereignty, full sovereignty of God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel, because they're blaming others and not themselves. Behold, according to verse 4, meaning if you don't get anything else, you've got to get this. Stop, get this. He says, all souls are mine. The souls of the Father. Mm -hmm. We all will stand before him according to 2 Corinthians 5. As well as the soul of the Son is mine. We all, no matter what age, no matter what generation, we're going to have to stand. He said the soul who sins shall die. So he said, I'm not going to punish you for the sins of others, but for your sins, you must pay. That's true. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. And, and I was watching one of those shows on TV last week, and the mother was trying to get the father to stop cussing. And his response mm. was, the only time I cussed was when my mother or my son or other people made me do it. <laughs> we cannot keep blaming other people for yes. our actions. It's so easy to blame someone else and absolve ourselves of responsibility. Jeremiah has the words for Israel who was blaming ancestors for messing up, for, mm -hmm. for them messing up. Yes. Now, Jeremiah make mention of the fact that this proverb was being spoken back 
in Jerusalem. Those people in the siege were saying, our fathers have eaten sour grapes and our teeth are set on edge. It's interesting how we just don't like to take responsibility for what we have done. Adam mm -hmm. blamed Eve, saying, that woman who you gave me, she gave me the fruit and I ate. Mm -hmm. Every man is going to be responsible to God for himself. When I stand before God, I'm going to have to answer for me. Yes. I'm not going to have to answer for my children or for my husband. As close as we are, the only one God is going to talk to me about is me. When you stand before God, you're only going to be responsible for you, but you will be responsible for you. You're going to have to ask, answer to God for yourself. And you can't say, well, my dad was or my mom was, nor is he going to reward you for what your parents were or reward your parents for what you are. Each man stands before God as an individual and answers for himself. Yeah. You mean I can't get done because mom and daddy did good? You can't. The King James devotional writer says that we are to decide for ourselves if we are to follow and be obedient to God and break free of the negative, bond, her, negative heritage. And you know, but, and I hear you saying that, but you know, uh, the kids, they catch a lot from the parents, don't they? They do. And so they then if, if you're teaching them right and being a good example for it, but on the other hand, there's some people who still blame their parents for things. That they did because they saw their parents doing it wrong. Right. But the Holy Spirit in his word is here to help us to correct that. Right. Here's some takeaways. Because the sins of the father, if we cling to that, then we're playing the blame game. Never play the blame game. Second thing is, we will give account to God only for what we have done wrong. Number, number three. The God of heaven has no delight in man's ruin. I remember when Dr. Willie Peterson was talking to me one time, and we were talking about preaching and teaching and preparing. And he said, can you quote me John 3.16? And this is about 20, 25 years ago. And I quoted John 3.16, and then he says, okay, now, give me John 3.17. I go, what? And then when he started saying it, then I could help. Yeah, I but I couldn't yeah. off the top because it wasn't one of the things that I thought about a lot. Okay, and John 3, 17 says this in the New King James Version. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, uh -huh. but that the world through him My might be saved. Yeah. So we all should be free of the blame game. <laughs> the sins of our father, they will pay for. The sins that we commit, we will pay for. We'll all stand before God. So I'm asking us, don't play the blame game. Forgive those who've hurt you and move on to enjoy life. Father, I praise you. You're so good, Lord, that you just allow us to have to take responsibility for our own wrong, Lord, and stand yes. before you and answer for those. Lord, we don't have to answer for anyone but ourselves. Yes. Father, I thank you that your son came and died for those sins that we have committed, Father. Help us, Father, to look at you and ask for forgiveness for all that we've done and not, Lord, put all of this on our children and help them walk through their own. I thank you, Father, and bless us, Lord, that we can obey you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.